I'm Karthik Ayan, a developer advocate at 100ms. Without wasting any time, let's start. This is episode 3 of Building Wordle with Live Video in Flutter with 100ms. We will be focusing on the multiplayer logic using the 100ms Live Video SDK. If you have missed the previous two episodes, the link is in the right top corner of the screen. Please make sure to watch that before continuing with this episode. Now, let us take a look at some of the basic concepts that we need to use the 100ms SDK. First is a room. You can think of room like a virtual place where you can join and interact with your fellow participants. Next is a peer. So peer is what you would call a participant in 100ms terminology. A peer can join the room, leave the room at any time they want. Every peer has three things associated with them. First is a role. Since we are building a simple app, all the peers in the room would have the same role. This is not something we need to focus on. But if you're really interested what you can do with roles, there's this awesome blog post that you should check out. Next is tracks. A track is a media that the peer can publish to the room. So there are three kinds of tracks. First is an audio track, then a video track, and then an auxiliary track. To give you a context, the audio track originates from the microphone, the video track originates from the camera, and the auxiliary track can be anything. But in most cases, it's the screen share. Next up is metadata. Peer metadata is a persistent state that the peer can set and update at any time it wants. And a peer's metadata is available to everyone inside the room. And this is what we will be using to show the guesses of the players inside the app. From the SDK perspective, a room is represented by an object of class HMS room, and a peer is represented by an object of class HMS peer, and a track is represented by an object of class HMS track. Let us now take a look at how to use the 100ms Flutter SDK. You start by initializing the SDK. First, create a HMS SDK object, then call the build method on it. Then, you have to create a class to listen to the updates. You can do this by extending HMS update listener class. Then you should implement all of the methods it comes with. And this class is where you listen and react to the state changes within the room. Then you create the object of the listener class and add it as an update listener to the SDK. You do this by calling HMS SDK dot add update listener and pass in the listener as an argument. Joining the room. You would need an auth token to join the room. You can get this by generating it from your own token service endpoint in the backend. I'll show you how I did it in a few minutes. Next, you create an object of HMS config by passing in the username and the authentication token. And then you call the HMS SDK dot join method by passing in this config that you just created, leaving the room. Before leaving the room, you should remove the listener that you added. You do this by passing in the meet event listener inside the method hmssdk.removeUpdateListener. Then you call the method hmssdk.leave. Now to render the remote peers video, this is what you have to do. There's this special widget called hmsvideoView that comes with the SDK that can help you render the video without any issues. All you have to do is pass in the video track. Here we are doing it by calling the video track property on the HMS peer object. Next is setting your peer metadata. First, encode the object that you want to share to a JSON string. Then, set the JSON string as the metadata by calling metadata. Now, if you want to listen to the remote peer's metadata changes, this is what you have to do. Inside the listener class, we have this method on peer update. You have to check if the update is equal to HMS peer update dot metadata changed. Then all you have to do is decode the JSON string from peer dot metadata and use it. And that's all you need to know to get started. Let's add 100 ms to our app by following this integration guide. First, let's add HMS SDK Flutter package into our app by adding it into the pubspec.yaml. To get the device permissions, we have to add a bunch of things in Android and the iOS directories. First, let's add this uh, inside the android manifest.xml 
or the Android app. So I'm going to paste this inside the Android manifest.xml. Okay. Now we have to set the min SDK version to 21. So here is the min SDK version. I'm going to change this to 21. Next, uh, if you use ProGod, you can add these rules uh, inside the file ProGodRules.pro. I'm going to skip this for now. Next is iOS. I'm going to copy this and paste it inside the info.playlist. I'm going to paste it here. Next, we have to set the iOS version to 12. So I'm in the pod file, I'm going to uncomment this and set the version from 11 to 12. We have one more thing to add, that is permission handler package. We are going to use this to request camera and microphone permissions at runtime. Ideally, we would do this uh, before uh, we get into the meeting screen. So I'm going to add the package here. So actually, this is how we are going to request permission uh, from the user with the help of this package. But we will come back to it after some time when we are working on the logic. I have created these two classes, meet actions and the meet kit uh, in their respective files, meet kit dot dot and uh, meet actions dot dot. And I have them uh, inside the meet logic directory, which is inside the logic directory. So I have moved the game kit and the models uh, inside this directory called game logic, which is inside the uh, logic directory on the same level as uh, meet logic. Let's take a look at the meet actions. Uh, it has two properties, a HMS SDK object and a HMS config object. And then inside the constructor, it's initializing the SDK object. And we have these methods for joining a room, leaving a room, updating the peer metadata and passing the peer metadata of the remote peers. Then we have this meet kit class, uh, which extends the change notifier. It has a meet actions object called actions. And since this is very similar to the game kit that we saw in the last episode, it has an init method. Here we will do all the tasks uh, that we need to do before joining a room. So, this method is uh, used to request the microphone and uh, camera permission. So I have just copy pasted it from the docs. And inside the init, I'm calling it. Once that's done, I'm initializing the meet actions object. Then I'm calling the actions.sdk.build. In order to listen to the events, we need a class that implements the HMS update listener. Uh, so we will do it right in the meet kit. Now that we have implemented it and uh, overrided all of the methods of that class, we can uh, add this uh, object as a listener. So we do this by uh, calling the actions.sdk.addUpdateListener and we pass this uh, keyword, which means this meetkit object will be used as a listener. Now let's implement all the methods of the meet actions class. To join a room, we need an auth token. So how do we generate it? We have to create our own backend service for the token generation. So here are some of the examples of how you can do it in different languages. But we won't be doing that. So 100ms provides an option to generate the auth tokens without really setting up our own uh, token generation backend. So what we have to do is uh, go to our dashboard, then go to your developer section, and if you see here, uh, you have this token endpoint. This is my subdomain. Every account will have a unique subdomain. Uh, you, you can go and check out yours. So what you have to do is first copy it. And then if you see here, uh, there's this URL format, uh, your token endpoint slash API slash token. So this is how you uh, get the token. You make a post request to that URL. 
with these three things set in the body a room id the role and the user id and this is how you get a response if you see here this is the token that you've been uh, looking for you can use this to join the room that you are uh, requested for here so how do you get this room id go to your dashboard create a new room once you create it go to the rooms and then up on top this is the room id you can just copy it so join room is going to accept uh, three parameters name room id and the subdomain it will then uh, make a post request with a uh, room id a user id and the role in the body and then uh, store the result then we can decode the body of the response and from that body uh, we can get the token next we will initialize the hms config object with the token as auth token and the name as the username then we will use this config to uh, call the sdk.join and that's all you need to join a room if you notice here uh, we have to pass in a random string for the user id so i'm going to do something i'm going to open the helper okay i've added this uh, method in the helper class so this is get random string so basically what this method does is it accepts the length and generates a random string of this length now it's time to replace it here now let's move to the leave room first we pass the make kit object as an argument and then call sdk.remove update listener on it then we call the sdk.leave method before we move on to the update metadata or parse metadata we have a model class to write what we are going to do is uh, create this peer data class add the properties that we want to share as a metadata so I have added these three properties. First is a word list. This will be the guest word list. The next one is the guest number, the current guest number. Next one is the iswin. And we have a constructor for it. Instead of manually writing the to map uh, to JSON methods and uh, from map from JSON factory methods, we can use this extension to easily do it. If you go to VS Code and search for Dart Data Class Generator, uh, you would find this extension. It's so easy to create all of these methods if you just have the properties listed in the class. Let me show you how to do it. So go to the class file and Command Shift P, and then Dart Data Class Generator, uh, and choose the Generate from Class properties. So now we have to create the from map and to map uh, methods for the word class 2. So I'm going to do this again for the word. So all I need here is just these two methods. So I'm going to remove everything else. Now it looks like uh, we need to create the from map to map for the letter uh, class 2. That's it. So we are going to use this uh, peer data class to create an object, change it to a JSON and then uh, set it as a metadata and whenever there's a metadata change for the remote peer we will uh, detect it and then parse it create the peer data object from the json and then use it now we are back in the meet actions update metadata we accept the local peer data of type uh, peer data and then uh, call the sdk.change metadata with uh, the metadata as uh, local peer data dot to json we pass the remote peers metadata as an argument and then check if it's null if it's null we just return null but if it's not then we use the factory method uh, peer data dot from json to create a peer data object and then uh, return it now we will complete the meet kit uh, to wrap up the logic and move to the ui first we have these two properties inside the meet kit the first one is all peers it is of type list of HMS peer. Next, we have a peer data map. So every HMS peer object will have a peer ID property. We will map that peer ID to a, a peer data object. And every time a remote peer updates their metadata, we will update the 
we will update their uh, metadata here by parsing it and then uh, storing it in the map. Now we'll look at the methods uh, to implement from the HMS update listener. The first one is on join. So this callback will be called on every successful join of the room by the user. Since this method will run only once when you join the room, we'll use this uh, chance to store the current state of the room. So we'll first check if the room.peers is not equal to null and then uh, set the all peers to the room.peers. Then we'll map the peers and set the peer uh, data map of uh, peer.peer ID to their respective metadata by parsing it uh, using the actions.parse metadata. And then finally, we'll call the notify listeners. If you remember from the uh, last episode, notify listeners is a special function that will tell the UI to re-render now that the state has changed. Next one is uh, on peer update. We have a peer object and then a HMS peer update object. So this peer object is the one that has changed and we can use this HMS peer update to check what kind of uh, update it was. So I've used the switch case and uh, I'm checking uh, if it's a peer join event, peer left event, metadata change event, role update event, name changed event, uh, default update, network already updated. If a new peer has joined, we'll add that peer to the all peers. If a peer has left, then we'll remove that peer from the all peers. Next, if a metadata has changed, then we'll uh, see uh, which peer it is and update uh, the metadata of that uh, peer. If the event is not any of these, then we will update the peer uh, in the all peers. So update peer accepts a peer object and finds the index of that peer object uh, inside the all peers. And if the peer index is not minus one, which means that peer is an existing peer, not a new one, it's already in the uh, all peers then it will replace that peer object with this peer object. Then finally, we call the notify listeners. Next, we have on track update. So this is called when there's an existing track uh, update or a new track has uh, been added or an existing track is uh, removed. So we have access to these three objects. First is uh, track of type HMS track and then track update of type HMS track update which is uh, like really similar to the HMS peer update and uh, HMS peer object. Since we will be using the video track property of the peer to render the video, uh, we won't have to handle it separately. What I'm going to do is uh, simply uh, update the peer. We have a few more methods to uh, implement, but we won't need them for this app. So uh, I'm not going to do anything. We have one more thing left uh, that is to clear these uh, two properties when you're leaving the room. So this clear method helps us clear the all peers list and the peer data map. So once you have left the room, uh, you have to uh, call this to clear them. Now that the meet logic is done, let's go and integrate it into the app. So here I am in the main dot dot and I have this uh, meet kit object ready. So all we have to do here is uh, just pass in this uh, object just like we did for the game kit with the help of the provider package. So, so I'm using the multi provider widget inside of which I have the change notifier provider dot value for the game kit and for the meet kit. Mm -hmm. And in the child, I have this uh, app. So I have created this new widget called join screen and I've placed it inside the screens directory on the same level as uh, play screens directory. And uh, we will be using this widget uh, mainly to uh, request the permission for camera and microphone. And once we have that, we'll also use this to uh, get the values that we need to join a room. So we will be passing these uh, name, uh, room ID and the subdomain that we get from this widget to the meet kids actions dot join room. Let's take a look at the UI. I have this the text field. Uh, it is a custom text field with some decorations. And I have this widget, the button which is uh, a button with some decorations. So we have these uh, three text fields and the button. The first one uh, is for uh, name. The second one is for room ID and the third one is for the subdomain. So once the user has uh, typed uh, these three values, they can click on the button 
and when the button is pressed it will start this uh, function start game and it will pass the uh, controller dot text of all these three uh, text fields inside the start game we'll get the current instance of meetkit by calling context dot read just like we did in the last episode and then we'll call meetkit dot init and when uh, meetkit dot init is complete we will be calling meetkit dot actions dot join room with uh, these uh, name room id and subdomain as the arguments and when the join room is complete the navigator will push to the play screen now that we know how the join screen works let's go and add it uh, inside the app dot dot in the app widget instead of this play screen we are going to replace the join screen now we are here in the play screen so this is where we start the new round uh, from the game kit we'll get the so what we'll do here is we'll get the meet kit object and update the peer metadata before we even start the round so this is the meet kit and we are creating the peer data object uh, from uh, the guess words uh, current guess number and the isvin uh, which we get from the game kit and then we call the uh, meet kit dot actions dot update metadata and pass in this uh, local peer data as the argument we have one more thing uh, left to do in this uh, widget that is if you click on the back button in android uh, you should be able to leave the room so we will be using will pop scope for that so i have wrapped it with the will pop scope and in the on will pop scope uh, function i get the meet kit then call the meet kit dot actions dot leave room and pass in the meet kit as an argument now we are here at the game keyboard so inside the enter widget uh, we have this on tap we will have to add this logic to update the metadata every time the user presses the enter button we first get the meet kit by calling context.read of type meet kit then once the game kit dot make guess is done we'll check if it's a valid guess if it's a valid guess then we create this peer data object and store it uh, in the local peer data then we call meet kit dot actions dot update metadata and pass in this uh, local peer data as an argument if it's an invalid guess uh, then we'll show the toast message that it's an invalid word just like we uh, did in the last uh, video now we are here in the meet section uh, inside the build method of the meet section we first uh, get the meet kit object by calling context dot watch of meet kit type then we have this list view with the scroll direction set to horizontal and for the children we map every single peer from this meet kit dot all peers into this uh, meet peer tile widget now let's go and create the meet peer tile inside the components directory i have added the meet peer tile uh, i have added the meet peer tile widget inside the meet peer tile dot dot uh, in the components directory so this accepts an object peer of type hms peer and inside the build method it starts with the container and then some decorations then uh, you have this stack where the first child uh, is the video so we check uh, if the uh, peer dot video track is null or uh, if the video track is mute in that case uh, we would show a no video as a text but when that's not the case we will render the video by using this uh, special widget hms video view from the 100 ms sdk so all we have to do is just uh, pass this track so we are passing uh, peer dot video track and uh, the next uh, the next child inside the stack is uh, a position widget uh, which will be at the bottom of the stack and it has some decorations inside of it we have this text widget uh, which uh, shows the peer's name by calling a widget dot peer dot name now all that's left uh, is to show the remote peers guesses we will add that right away okay so we have this is expanded uh, variable here that's uh, set to false and inside the uh, build method we're getting the meet kit by calling context.watch of type meet kit then we are getting the respective peers metadata by uh, using the peer data map and the peer dot peer id and we are storing it inside this uh, variable called peer data then we wrap the stack uh, with inkwell and add the on tab callback uh, to toggle the is expanded variable that we just uh, saw here 
So what we are trying to do is, uh, when the is expanded is false, we'll just show the uh, most recent guess. And when you tap on it and the is expanded is true, we will show all the guesses. And coming to the name part of this uh, UI, uh, we have added something. So for the height of the container, if this expanded is true, then uh, the height will be 110. If not, it's 42. Then uh, we have this here. If the peer data is not equal to null, then uh, we can map it to a widget and show it on the UI. If is expanded is true, then we are trying to uh, map the whole peer data dot word list to a widget called mini colored word bar. This mini colored word bar is exactly the copy of uh, guess word bar that we saw in the last uh, two videos. Uh, it's it's exactly the same, but we remove the text widget that shows the letter and uh, decrease the size. So this mini colored word bar uh, maps uh, all of the words letters, the mini colored letter tile, and these letter tiles uh, based on the status of the letter, it would show different colors. Coming back to this part, if it's expanded, uh, it means that all of these guess words have to be uh, shown on the UI. Else, else we'll be showing the most recent guess. If this expanded is true, then we would map the peer data dot word list to this uh, mini colored word bar and show all of those uh, guess words on the UI. Else, we'd be showing the mini mini colored word bar with the latest. Uh, uh, word from the word list and if the peer data is null then uh, we just show a sized box and finish it now i'm going to test this functionality by uh, joining the game from the simulator and from my phone uh, first i'll join from the simulator now i'll join from my phone okay so I'll make this guess uh, on the simulator first. It is visible here. So I'll make a guess from my phone now. Yeah. Let me make another guess. Okay, it's working fine. Finally, we've completed the app and it's now ready to play. All you have to do now is ask your friends to join in the same room and play world with them. But that doesn't sound too convincing, right? So I use these two packages, Chatless and Unilinks. I made a feature where you can uh, invite your friends by sharing a link. When they click on the link, the app will open with the room ID and the subdomain in place. All they have to enter is their name and they can join the game. Feel free to check out the source code, the link is in the description. And thanks for making it this far. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in content related to live video.